Yeah, thank you for taking the time to answer for my questions for today. So why don't we begin by you uh, introducing yourself, your role and your company? Sure, my name is Kerry Lynch. I'm the CEO of Power Nickel. Uh, Power Nickel is advancing the advanced uh, exploration project uh, for polymetallic minerals in uh, Namaska, Quebec. That's a sort of sort of central uh, north of the country. And it's, uh, you know, copper, nickel, uh, and noble metals, almost equal parts. So it's uh, had some pretty spectacular uh, uh, drill results lately, and uh, it seems to be moving in the right direction. So that's what we're going to be coming to talk to you guys about. All right, sounds great. And with that, what are some of the key projects or um, initiatives currently underway? So we're drilling right now. The summer program is about 8,000 meters, uh, and then it'll be followed up with a 30,000 meter winter program. And we're uh, we're following up on a um, couple of successful initiatives. One we had we had approved up of about 7.1 million tons of about 1.13 percent nickel, and we're following up on that. And then we've had uh, you know probably I don't know 15, 16 holes of you know probably an average uh, sub, you know I don't know maybe five to ten meters of five to ten percent copper equivalent, including uh, lots of uh, gold and silver and platinum and palladium. So uh, that's on the line zone. Uh, it's highly likely these things are connected. They're five and a half kilometers apart. So part of the winter program is to try and connect the dots here and obviously to uh, add more tonnage on both sides of the equation. So we're certainly going to be drilling um, rich in terms of information and assays. And uh, and there's some other interesting things that we're doing that on the business development side that's a little bit uh, outside the norm. We're advancing a, uh, a nickel refinery project with uh, the largest private nickel refiner in the world with a view to uh, getting nickel powders uh, ready for production in 2027 in North America for the uh, EV market. So uh, uh, we'll have a feasibility study out on that in uh, late Q3. That sounds great. And besides those projects and what you uh, alluded to, what do you anticipate will drive price momentum over the next year or rather in the next year? Yeah, I, th I think it's those projects we talked about you know, it'll be, uh, you know, proving more resource and, and expanding the resource and showing how big potentially world class this could be. Uh, so, uh, right, you know, in, in the polymetallic world, the, the most successful polymetallic uh, mine, and in fact, the most successful mine in the world is Norilsk. It's the only trillion dollar deposit in the world. So polymetallics can be very big. Uh, Platte Reef in, in, uh, in South Africa is another fine example. And that's uh, Ivanhoe and, and Robert Friedland actually led our last round. He uh, uh, was a $20 million round. He was the, he took over half of it. Rob McEwen, who's another legend in the mining space, was took another 20%. So, so they're of the view, and we're of the view, this could be a very large polymetallic discovery. Uh, so uh, this next round of drilling will really start to, you know, identify that and communicate that to the market. So it's uh, we're very much on the um, early stages of the uh, Lausanne curve, and that's often the most exciting stage for investors. So lots of uh, advanced drilling news, and then of course the development news on the feasibility study will also be another uh, uh, needle mover for us from an evaluation perspective. As an industry leader, what do you consider your company's most impactful achievement, and how has it shaped your vision for the future? Well, our, we're, uh, one of our objectives is to develop the world's first uh, carbon neutral polymetallic mines. So we've been a leader in, uh, we were the first ones to offset our, our drilling uh, with carbon offsets. Um, and uh, everything we're, we're doing, we're obviously trying to recognize that there is a, a movement to a greener approach to things. And we're, we're blessed in some respects to being uh, infrastructure wise, we're located right, right beside a Hydro Quebec substation. So obviously being able to do a electrified mine, that's gonna be easier for us than, than some. And also because we're um, an ultramafic rock, our, our rock naturally sequesters CO2. So there's that. And then finally, uh, you know, our uh, partner on the development side on the, on the nickel refinery side of things, is CDMR and they're uh, a world leader in that and they have a very interesting recycling uh, piece to it that you can add to the mine for fairly low cost so we can actually take the uh, all batteries uh, not only NMA and NMC but also lithium mine and convert them back to the component parts and uh, basically go create a grave in this thing so I think uh, we see you know first and foremost we're in the business to make our shareholders money fundamentally that's what capitalism is all about but we also recognize that there's a, a broader community here. So it's about making it in an ethical way and a, and, a, and, a, and a way that's sustainable for the environment. What opportunities or trends do you see in the market right now likely to future growth for your company? Well, I think the broad trend is uh, the movement from, uh, you know, from a, a, on an investment side, from the tech uh, to commodities. 
I'm not saying people are going to stop investing in tech because that's not going to happen. But but clearly, tech is toppy. If you're to look at the tech commodity curve, uh, tech is at the top, commodities at the bottom, and uh, there will be a reversion to the mean. And and often, you know, commodities are really bad now, but it's going to get less bad. And, the, and often, in investing, the one of the, your best moves is going from bad to less bad. So I think that trend is going to happen, and there will be a commodity boom because uh, honestly, we haven't invested enough in mining over the last number of years, and we're going to see that in the supply side. So there's going to be some supply shortages in a number of minerals and that will impact price so that will drive uh you know sort of uh you know commodity prices and stock prices so i think there'll be a big move to the, uh, the commodity side of things and these are you know we're talking a tenfold move across the sector so inside the sector company specific moves can be 100 baggers so that's why people you know invest in junior mining for sure and i think there'll be a number of those in the next little while and that'll be exciting for the investment uh, community so i think you touched on it a bit but what are the Biggest challenges currently in the mining industry, and how's your company in a, in a position to address them? I think the uh, you know there's a, a number of challenges. The, the perception is bad. You know, uh, people I think perceive mining as dirty, and uh, you know, as a miner and an environmentalist, I couldn't be you know uh, more opposed to that idea. Miners are you know generally speaking, especially the modern day miner, is the most uh, ecologically sensitive uh, executive out there because. You, there's no way you can get the thing permitted up and built if you don't take that approach. So uh, I think that we have to be more assertive as an industry to communicate that, hey, uh, clean mining is, is in fact been around reality for a long time. And without, uh, you know, clean mining materials, you wouldn't be able to have, uh, you know, your shirt you're wearing, the phone you're talking on, the car you arrived at work at today to travel to those nice plane destinations. All that's possible because of mining. So we need to be as an industry much more assertive about the positive image that we we uh, and the positive impact we have in this world uh the second thing honestly one of the biggest challenges we've got is people uh because of the underinvestment, um you know our people went elsewhere so we've, we're, we're and you know this is a generational business where you know expertise is passed down sure there's science and we're, we're learning all about some new sciences and stuff like that and there's always advances in science but there's also i would call it the art of mining and the art of mining uh, was passed down from one mining leader to another to generations of workers. And, and as they grew and expanded, they, they shared this knowledge base. Uh, we've, we've lost a lot of that, unfortunately. And, uh, you know, we're going to need a lot more mining uh, workers and a lot more mining knowledge sharing. So I think that's one of the big challenges we face as a sector. Well, that concludes all the questions I have for today. Thank you so much.